and Commission's recommendation. I am too. It's cleaner because we don't then have to add the condition of creating an easement down that segment of the private road. Right. Yeah. All right. So, somebody want to make a motion? Go for it. All right. Here we go. Before you do that, what's the motion to drive over the drive, the road? I don't think it's going to be It's in it as in the the draft motion we have here. It's to incorporate the town engineer's letter, and the town engineer's letter is consistent right. with redoing the road. Yeah. All right. So I've got a motion for the board to consider findings of fact. Golden Ridge LLC is requesting an amendment to the previously approved Golden Ridge subdivision to add another lot at the end of Golden Ridge Lane, which requires review under section 1625 amendments to previously approved subdivisions. Number two, the town engineer is recommending revisions to the plans to bring the subdivision design into compliance with town standards. Number three, preservation of landscaping should be incorporated into the development of the lots. Number four, the planning board by this vote grants waivers to road design standards to permit the construction of the subdivision road as depicted on the plans. And number five, the applicant has substantially addressed the standards of the subdivision ordinance, section 1631. Therefore, be it ordered that, based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Golden Ridge LLC for an amendment to the previously approved Golden Ridge subdivision to add another lot at the end of Golden Ridge Lane be approved, subject to the following conditions. Number one, that the engineer's plans be revised to address the recommendations in the town's engineer's letter, dated May 11, 2011. Number two, that a note be added to the plans indicating that down trees and other debris near lot number two, eight Golden Ridge Lane, um, be cleaned up. Number three, the, that written confirmation be provided from the Youngs that they grant permission for the proposed planting and the debris cleanup, um, or the plan will be revised to eliminate the plantings and cleanup. Number four, that a note be added to the plans restricting activities outside the building envelope to the installation of driveways and utilities. Number five, that road maintenance agreements be submitted in a form acceptable to the town attorney, signed by the applicant and any other parties or recorded in the Cumberland County Registry of Deeds. Number six, that the applicant pay a fee of $4,455 um, as an open space impact fee. And number seven, that the plans be revised for the above conditions and submitted to the town planner for review and approval, and that there be no recording of the plat until the above conditions have been satisfied. Did you say in there, because if so, I missed it, that the applicant, that a note be added that required the applicant to move the remove the debris? Let's see, I did, I think I did, that a note be added to the plans indicating that down trees and other debris near lot number two be cleaned up. I guess I didn't say that the applicants would be cleaning them up. But is, is that a given? If it's no, that's plan? fine. Okay. okay. Do we want to add, Maureen made a suggestion that the permission to, to um, from the Youngs to uh, I, I added that into the. Um, she very cleverly. To the, oh, you cleverly did. Yeah. Okay. So yep. cleverly, I missed it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Any further discussion? Hiromi, did you get all of that? No, I'll have to get it off the table. Oh, all right. So we ready to vote? All right. All in favor? It's five of us in favor. None opposed. Motion carries. Hmm? Great, thank you. Uh, Carol. I'll be curious to know what the applicant decides about the easement. Thank you.
The next item on the agenda, Rosewood Subdivision Amendment. Joe Frustacci is requesting amendments to the previously approved Rosewood Subdivision to create another lot at the end of Rosewood Drive in accordance with Section 1625 Subdivision Amendment, and we will have a public hearing after the applicant makes his presentation. Madam Chair, I'll be right with you, if you don't mind, a little technical uh, issue here. And I'm there. If you don't mind, we will... Uh, and better? Thank you. This is the comedy section of the evening here. I'm paying him by the hour. That's why we have to do it. Let's try that. If you need more push pins, sir, in the uh, yeah. podium. Wait, we'll Did you hear that? I'm sorry? More push pins from Teddy. Oh, there you go. Good job. We got push pins behind us. Here we go. Bear with us. I promise we'll be right with you. This is for your viewing pleasure. There we go. Thank you for your patience. No problem. These things happen. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board. Rick Light, uh, Light Environmental Design, and the applicant, Joseph Fristach. Um Since our site walk, I'll take a minute, if you'd like, and go through the plan changes uh, since the last meeting in the site walk. Please do. Uh, first of all, and I'm looking for a pointer. Is there a pointer here, Maureen? What's that? The point, do we have a pointer here? That's that's okay. Maybe we could just just uh, I can just use the cue on here, and uh, that that'll work fine, Marie. Okay. Anyway, okay, we'll get going here. I promise. Okay. The the changes since the last meeting. There were several comments from the town engineer, also from the planning board, and I'll walk you through the the, the substantive changes to the plan. Uh, number one is that there was the issue that you remember from the site walk of the drainage easements, which uh, was requested that you know, the drainage runs across the back of, of lot 4B, and it was requested that we had a 15-foot drainage easement on the back of lot 4B and a 15-foot drainage easement on the back of 4A, and those are on the plans now. 
to encompass the drainage swale, which again picks up the runoff, as you remember, from the site walk and runs uh, to the back of 4B and enters into the town property and further down to Mitchell, to Mitchell Road. So those have been added to the plan and draft uh, deed, uh, easement deeds have been included in your May 4th packet for those lots, uh, draft language. The second item of substance uh, based on comments from the town engineer is we slightly revised the T turnaround geometry in two different ways. Uh, one is we, we uh, changed the radius. We, we have a power pole, if you recall, from the sidewalk. It's about seven feet from the property pin right here where the arrow is. And the town requirement was for a 20-foot radius. So we we're not, not able to achieve the 20-foot radius because of the power pole. We did center the, the T, and, and, and the orientation to the pavement was off by a couple degrees from 90. So we adjusted that, and we did put a 20-foot easement on this corner here. But also, we, we took, uh, based on comments for the town's emergency vehicle, we took a, 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 a B40, uh, which is a, sort of a bus design, a 40-foot vehicle, 32-foot wheelbase design, and used a template and found for a vehicle to come in, for instance, and make a backing movement and pull out, uh, because the existing rose would drive is 18 feet, the vehicle would need more, it comes into the geometry, would need more room in the width department. So we actually have proposed additional gravel in here to widen the end of the roadway such that a vehicle could actually pull in, make an appropriate backing movement, and pull out again. And so that's been added. It's within the right of way, and it's been added to the, to the plan. The third thing is that we had add, uh, the town engineer had asked as a minor comment that the silt fence be shown graphically, which was shown at the edge of the property line. We've added that, put, made sure that the silt fence along the edge of the swale would be on the property line, and added a note to add silt fence at the base of the wall down here as needed during construction. And the other item that was addressed was, and we talked about the site walk. The original plan had, the plan proposes uh, additional infill buffering. The applicant wasn't, had, as we talked about the site walk, had suggested that on his own cognizance that he add some white pines to the lot as infill. We look at that, that buffer uh, with lot three in the site walk. And on the original plan, we had actually shown some of the trees here in the right of way. We have taken those trees graphically and suggested that they be on the lot. And we've suggested this conceptually with a note saying final location of trees to be placed by the applicant as infill. But we've taken those trees out of the town's right of way or the the private right away so they don't have to be in responsibility of the road maintenance agreement. Those are essentially the plan changes that we have made uh, also in your application that you'll find that we did receive our letter and provided the letter uh, from, the, from the Portland Water District and there's additional information uh, regarding the financial capacity of the applicant and technical capacity so I think all that information is in there. Thank you. Okay, any questions from members of the planning board before we open the public hearing? Okay, the public hearing is, oh, go ahead, Liza. Um, the, um, the town engineer had said something about a, a, a clay barrier. I, I can't find it. It's not at my fingertips right now. Yes. Adding like a clay wall to, you know, not let water through. And I'm wondering if you made any changes based on that recommendation. No, I was going to go through those comments after that, but I'll, I'll jump to that now. Oh. The, the town engineers, but no, it's perfectly applicable. In the May 11th town engineers response letter, uh, they agreed that we've addressed all items. The one item that's outstanding that uh, Boreen, should the board go to a findings of fact tonight, uh, would be as a condition of approval, is that we take the boulder retaining wall, and I'll show that right here, and there's a detail on the second sheet, and add a clay liner behind it and just add some additional detailing to that wall. Uh, we haven't had an opportunity to do that since the letter came out last week, but we're in agreement of doing that, and we agreed on the site walk. We talked about that. So if that could be made a condition of approval, we're certainly in agreement of doing that. Yes. Okay. Any right. Thank you. So now we will open the public hearing. If there's any member of the public who wishes to speak on this proposed amendment to the Rosewood subdivision, please come forward and give us your name and address. Anyone here who wishes to speak on this item? No one. All right. In that case, the public hearing is closed. So we can now proceed with any questions that any member.